Hi there boys and girls, welcome to lesson 6.8, Algebra Patterns with Fractions. Our essential question is how can you use addition or subtraction to describe a pattern or create a sequence with fractions? Please turn in your Go Math book to lesson 6.8. So let's go ahead and take a look at question number three. Now for question number three, we need to look and see what exactly is happening. I can see that my number looks like it's decreasing because it's starting out as one and nine tenths, but then it goes to one and seven tenths. And what I know is one and seven tenths is less than one and nine tenths. So right away, I know my rule is going to be a subtraction rule, but we have to determine how much is it decreasing. A way we can do this is subtract 1 and 7 tenths from 1 and 9 tenths. Let's go ahead and do that. 1 whole and 9 tenths minus 1 whole and 7 tenths. My denominators are both the same in this case, so all I have to do is subtract my numerators. 9 minus 7 is 2, and I'll have tenth as my denominator. And then 1 minus 1 is 0. So therefore, I know my rule is decreasing by 2 tenths. But let's go ahead and prove it once more in this situation. I have 1 and 3 tenths, and I'm going to subtract 1 and 1 tenth. And when I subtract, I get 2 tenths. And of course, my whole number, 1 minus 1, will be 0. Therefore, I know my rule is to decrease by 2 tenths. So my missing number in my pattern would be 1 and 5 tenths because I'm going to take away 2 tenths from 7 tenths. So I will have 1 and 5 tenths. Now you can say you're decreasing by 2 tenths or if you simplified, you can also call it decreasing by 1 fifth because 2 tenths can be simplified to 1 fifth. Oh, and don't forget, you also need to be able to recognize that the other term in our sequence can also be considered one whole and one half, because we all know five tenths is equivalent to one half. So let's go ahead and take a look at question number four. With question number four, I see right away that my denominators are different. So the rule with finding patterns in fractions is you want to make sure all your denominators are the same. So I want to go ahead and list my multiples of six. And when I list my multiples of six, I would have six, 12. And because I have three other 12s in my other denominators, let's go ahead and change two and one six to have 12 as a denominator. So for me to do that, I would find an equivalent fraction. 2 and 1 6 is equal to 2 and 2 twelfths. Therefore, let's go ahead and change this to 2 and 2 twelfths. Now we can figure out what's happening. Is my rule increasing or decreasing? Well, I'm starting with 2 and 5 twelfths, then it goes to 2 and 2 twelfths, then 1 and 11 twelfths. So right away I know my rule is a subtraction rule because my numbers are decreasing. So let's go ahead and write minus on our rule and now let's determine what exactly we're subtracting. So let's go ahead and take 2 and 5 twelfths mi minus 2 and 2 twelfths. All right, we always remember to subtract your numerators only. 5 minus 2 will be 3, and we keep our denominator of 12 the same. And of course, my whole number is 2 minus 2 is 0. So I will be subtracting 3 twelfths. And if we checked it with our next one, where we have 2 and 2 twelfths minus 1 and 11 twelfths, can I take 2 twelfths from 11 twelfths? No, I can't, but I can regroup and make a hole right here of 12 twelfths plus 2 twelfths is 14 twelfths. And now we can subtract 14 twelfths minus 11 twelfths is 3 twelfths. So as you can see, these are both the same. So my rule of subtracting 3 twelfths is correct. So why don't we go ahead and just find our missing term in our pattern. That'll go right here. So remember, we're going to subtract 3 twelfths from 1 and 11 twelfths. So I'm going to work right up here. 1 and 11 twelfths minus 3 twelfths. All right. 
11 minus 3 is 8 twelfths. So 11 twelfths minus 3 twelfths is 8 twelfths. And we will drop down my one hole. So we would say the missing term in our pattern will be one hole and 8 twelfths. And for all you experts out there that are really good at simplifying fractions, I bet you also understand that one whole and eight twelfths can be simplified. We can actually simplify that to one whole, and if you divide the numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor, which is four, you're going to have two thirds. So that can also be considered our missing term in our pattern. One whole and two thirds, or one whole and eight twelfths. All right, everyone, now let's look at question five. It says, write the first four terms of the sequence. And it tells me to start at one half. So I'm gonna make four little lines here to remind me that I'm finding the first four terms of my sequence. And it already gives me the very first one as one half. So let's go ahead and write one half in the first line. Our job is to find the next three terms of our sequence. And here's my rule. I need to add one third, so I know my pattern will be increasing by one-third each time. So we're going to do this step by step. The first one we need to do is add one-third to my one-half. So we've learned that back in one of our earlier lessons with adding fractions with unlike denominators. Let's go ahead and do this one together unless you feel like an expert and you want to pause the video and do it ahead of me. Alright, I'm going to find 6 to be my common denominator because if you list your multiples of 2 and 3, 6 is the first least common denominator. So there you go. So let's go ahead and find our equivalent fractions. One half equals how many sixths? Well I know two times three is six, so one times three will be three. And let's look at one third. One third is equal to how many sixths? Well I know three times two is six, so one times two will be two. And now let's go ahead and add. 3 6 plus 2 6 is 5 6. So I'm going to go ahead and list on my second term 5 6. And I know that's already simplified. And now let's see what we have to do next. Now we need to find the third term. And remember, our rule is to add 1 third to my 5 6. So here we go. We're going to start over again, but this time we're going to add 5 6 and 1 third. And just like we did earlier, you need to find your common denominator for 6 and 3. Now I found 6 to be my common denominator, so 5 6 is equivalent to 5 6. And 1 third is equivalent to 2 6, because 3 times 2 is 6, so 1 times 2 would be 2. So let's go ahead and put a 2 6 right there. Now when we add up our two fractions, now we can because my denominators are the same. 5 6 plus 2 6 is 7 6. Now we know that to be as an improper fraction, and what we have to do is make that a mixed number. I know 6 6 is 1 whole. 6 6 plus 1 6 is 7 6. So therefore, this would be 1 whole and 1 6. So let's go ahead and write that as our third term. 1 whole and 1 6. Okay everyone, now let's find the fourth term in our sequence. Well, we know our rule is to add one-third, so let's go ahead and set up our equation. One and one-six plus one-third. Again, you can see that my denominators are different, but we know our first multiple for three and six that will be the same would be, in fact, six. So I'm going to leave one and one-six alone, and I'm going to find my equivalent fraction for one-third to be equal to two-six. Now we can add. 1 whole plus, and 1 6 plus 2 6 would equal 1 whole and 3 6. And we know 1 whole and 3 6 can also be simplified to 1 and 1 half. So there you have it. There's our first four terms of this sequence. Following the rule of adding 1 third. Now let's go ahead and try another finding the first four terms of a sequence. But this time our rule says to subtract 3 fourths. So again, let's go ahead and make four lines to find the first four terms of our sequence. And I'm going to go ahead and start with what it gives me, starting with 3 and 1 eighth. So let's place 3 and 1 eighth as our first term. 
Now for this one, boys and girls, my rule says to subtract three fourths. And as you can see, my denominators are different. We need to go ahead and make them alike. Therefore, we can subtract. So let's go ahead and start out with three and one eighth. And we're gonna subtract three fourths. Well, we all know eight and four can have a common denominator of eight as being my first least common multiple. Well, this will stay the same then. Three and one eighth will remain the same. But three fourths is equal to how many eighths? I know four times two is eight. So three times two would be six. So let's go ahead and write six eighths. Now I can subtract three and one eighths minus six eighths. But we've learned that you cannot subtract one eighth from six eighths until you regroup. So let's go ahead and make a new whole. We'll take away a whole and we'll add a whole. So we'll add eight eighths to my one eighth. And this way I'll have nine eighths. So we have two wholes and nine eighths minus six eighths. And now I can subtract. Nine eighths minus six eighths is in fact three eighths. And let's go ahead and bring down my two wholes. So my next term in my sequence will be two wholes and three eighths. So now what we want to do is we want to subtract three fourths from two wholes and three eighths because that would give us our next term in our sequence. So let's go ahead and set it up as two wholes and three eighths minus three fourths. As you can see, my denominators are not the same, but that's okay because I know my multiples of four are four eight. I can stop right there because I see eight up above. So let's go ahead and make an equivalent fraction for three-fourths to equal how many eighths? I know three-fourths is equal to six-eighths. And I can keep two and three-eighths the same. Now, just like we did in our last question in our sequence, we can see that when you subtract three-eighths, take away six-eighths, this is greater. And I can't subtract six-eighths from three-eighths. I need to regroup from my two wholes. So let's go ahead and cross out my two wholes, take away one whole, and we're going to make a whole. And we know one whole is equal to eight-eighths. So eight-eighths plus three-eighths is eleven-eighths. Now I can subtract eleven-eighths minus six-eighths. I know eleven take away five, six is five. So I'll put a five there and make an eight as my denominator. And of course, I will just bring down this one whole. So my next term in my sequence should be one whole and five eighths. All right, everyone, let's do our last one in our sequence. We need to subtract three fourths from one and five eighths. So here we go. One and five eighths is my starting fraction, and we're going to subtract three fourths. Again, my denominators are not the same, but I know my multiples of four to be four, eight. And this is already eight, so I'll leave that the same. So one and five eighths still equals one and five eighths, but three fourths is equal to how many eighths? I know it's equal to six eighths. All right, we can't take away six eighths from five eighths unless you regroup. So here we go, let's go ahead and regroup. We're gonna take away a whole, and we're gonna add a whole. We're gonna add eight eighths to my five eighths. And I know eight eighths plus five eighths equals 13 eighths. So now I can subtract 13 eighths minus six eighths equals seven eighths. So my last term in my sequence should be seven eighths. And I know that's already simplified. Let's look at number nine. It says Jared's puppy weighed three and three fourths ounces at birth. So that would be considered our first term in our sequence. Then looking at the next statement, it says at one week old, the puppy weighed five and one eighths ounces. So let's go ahead and write five and one eighths. As you can see, my terms are increasing in value. Next, it says at two weeks old, the puppy weighed six and one half ounces. So I'm gonna put down six and one half. Again, as you can see, my values are increasing. If the weight gain continued in this pattern, how much will the puppy weigh at three weeks old? Well, as we know, this is birth, one week, two weeks, so therefore we're looking for the third week. So this would be my next term in my sequence. But we have to determine how much are we increasing by each week. Remember how we can figure this out? You can subtract this value 
from your second value to see how much it increases. And if you do that again from here, take 6 and 1 half minus 5 and 1 eighths, and if it cons remains consistent, therefore you have solved your pattern. So let's go ahead and start off with our first two terms. We have 3 and 3, 3 fourths and 5 and 1 eighths. I'm going to go ahead and start out by subtracting 5 and 1 eighth minus 3 and 3 fourths. Again, let's go ahead and find our common denominator. I know 4 and 8 will share a common denominator of 8. Therefore, 5 and 1 eighths will remain the same, but 3 and 3 fourths would equal 3 and 6 eighths. Now, as you can see, I have to regroup because I cannot take away 1 eighth minus 6 eighths. So let's go ahead and borrow from a whole and let's make a whole. 1 8 plus 8 eighths equals 9 eighths. 9 eighths minus 6 eighths is 3 eighths, and I have one whole. So I'm predicting that my pattern is increasing by one whole and 3 eighths. So I'm just going to write right up here plus one whole and 3 eighths. Now let's go ahead and see if this pattern continues with our next two terms. I need to subtract 5 and 1 eighths from 6 and 1 half. So let's go ahead and do that again. 6 and 1 half minus 5 and 1 eighths. Again, I have to find my like denominator, and I know that is to be 8. So 5 and 1 eighths will remain the same, and 6 and 1 half equals 6 wholes and 4 eighths, because 2 times 4 is 8, so 1 times 4 is 4. All right, I know I can subtract this one. 4 eighths minus 1 eighth is 3 eighths, and 6 wholes minus 5 wholes is 1 whole. Oh, do you see that? It is the same. We're going to add 1 whole and 3 eighths. Therefore, now that we've figured out this pattern, we're adding and it's increasing by one whole and three eighths, I can find my next term in my sequence. Let's go ahead and add one whole and three eighths to my six and one half. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that up right down here. Six and one half plus one whole and three eighths. All right, again, we have to have like denominators when we add. So let's go ahead and make my denominators the same. And I'm putting down 8, because when you list your multiples of 2 and 8, 8 is the least common multiple. All right, so 1 and 3 eighths will remain the same, but 6 and 1 half equals 6 and 4 eighths. So let's go ahead and add 6 and 4 eighths plus 1 and 3 eighths. And I know that to be 7 and 7 eighths. So I would say that this cute little puppy weighed at three weeks old, seven and seven eighths ounces. All right, boys and girls, please take your time on number one and two on the back side, finding the rule for the sequence. Please don't guess, but please try to work it out by using the strategies that I've shown you in this video. And please don't forget to assess yourself as either a level one, two, three, or four in your level of understanding. And again, do questions three through six on the back side as well for those are review questions. And we will check these tomorrow in class. Have a great night.